Hello everybody, this is Razor X here back with a new video today, and this is going to be a new fresh video today, and is because I have been planning to do this for a while, and it is ranking the classes of Team Fortress 2. I have been playing the game for a while now, each class on a random game I can pick specifically whoever I want to be. For my own main classes, I kinda choose mostly either the soldier or the demoman for some reasons well, because I kinda like their explosive weaponry and damage, but I prefer the demoman instead, since you can also become a melee champ as well. For the secondary classes, I like choosing pyro, and especially the engineer. But as we are going to be talking about the other classes that are going to be ranked at, sit back and relax as we will be ranking all the 9 classes from D all the way up to the SG level. So just before we can get into today's video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe with the notification bell turned on, as this really helps me out and my channel to see more episodes of me. So anyways let's rev up into today's video. So just a little note over here, this video is strictly only an opinion of myself and this isn't really mean to be treated as a quote unquote fact as I've stated. Now let's begin. So the first classes ranked we are going to be talking about are the offense classes who can take on the front lines are the scout, the soldier and the pyro. The first class we are going to be discussing about is the fast running mercenary the scout. His main weapon is the scatter gun. His secondary ranges from a pistol or a pack of beverages like soda or milk, and his melee weapons range from a bat to a fish. How classic can that be? As for my main loadout, I do have a collection of types of weapons for the scout especially being the soda popper and the force of nature. I own both weapons and these two bad boys are sick as fuck. The soda popper can build you up hype and the force of nature can knock back enemies with great power, and especially damage thanks to the flanking power of the scatter gun respectively. The second slot before my little scunty is mainly the mad milk, since it can give off a healing effect by damaging when doused on enemies. Finally the melee slot bar, I choose the sandman bat, since you can launch a baseball bat to slow down enemies with it. That is my very own loadout for the scout I know some of you guys might have used this one as well. I know there are other weapons similar to the sandman like the rap assassin, where you can make enemies bleed by launching a christmas tree ornament to them, but sadly I don't own the weapon. Now finally what I use the scout for, mostly I always start him as an offensive frontline mercenary always flanking foes with the soda popper of my own, but it doesn't always counter all the other classes that it will face like the engineer. So now what rank does this class would be in, before I haven't really used him that much, as before I'm getting really skilled with him, I'd say he's really good, but not really effective against over other classes, so I'd say the BT level. The next class we are going to be talking about is one of my favorite classes, the soldier. Oh yes I love the soldier so much that I used to main him back in the old days when I first played TF2. His main epic weapons ranges from the iconic rocket launcher, where you can also rocket jump as well to reach farther places. It is very effective against sentry turrets and even up to a group of enemies too where they can deal a great amount of splash damage. The second slot bar wields his own default shotgun like the other classes respectively. We will get more into his other arsenal very soon so don't worry. The melee slot for him is the shovel, and I believe soldiers did in fact use the shovels as melee weapons during the world wars. Now time for his specialized weapons, the most main rocket launcher I use is the original. I know it's just identical to the stock weapon, but the only difference is the weapon skin, but I still like it somehow. Don't worry I also like using the black box, where you can health yourself up to 20 HP per full hit you can damage. The most top weapon so far for the soldier in man vs machine is going to be the beggar's bazooka, thanks to it firing a multiple barrage of rockets, and when this shit when maximum doubt, annihilates a horde of robots with massive DPS count, and especially when you have crits on you deal major DPS damage to tanks quickly draining their health away, and I've completed wave 6, 6, 6 multiple times with this super weapon I own. I think there is another similar rocket launcher the airstrike, but I think you need more kills in order to release a barrage with rockets, but only when you're in the midair, but I'd prefer the beggar's bazooka for man vs machine, since you don't always need to get enough kills to start off launching a rocket barrage to a horde of robots. However I may mention some classes like this one in MVM, 
but I may be saving this topic about the min MVM for a different video. And finally the weapon I used to main formally is the Cow Mangler 5000 I used to use this weapon so much is because you don't need to require actual ammo boxes to supply its power and energy like how regular rocket launchers use, but now I don't really use the weapon now because of sentry turrets that always appear in front of my pathway and the cow mangler isn't really effective against the buildings like sentries and dispensers so instead i switch back to something regular like the stock rocket launcher and which lead to me using the original version because it's widely popular throughout the tf2 community so that it deals normal and effective damage to buildings like the sentry respectively the next slot I mainly use for my soldier are the panic attack which is an upgraded version of the normal shotgun it shoots and damages better thanks to it firing more bullets. The other non-shotgun weapons I have are the buff banner which can buff your teams into dealing mini crits which is also one of the useful items to use in game. I also own the battalion's backup which can buff your teammates defense resistance from crits and upgrade your damage against sentry turrets by 50% and 35% on other sources, probably enemy teams too. And don't forget about the righteous bison which I also used formerly with my Kalmangler 5000. Just like the Kalmangler it doesn't need any ammo respectively, and it penetrates through enemy targets. And like the Kalmangler it doesn't deal that much damage to buildings as it's very weak to them. And finally the melee slot bar, I'd prefer the disciplinary action since it can boost your teammates speed, and for the other part I'd like to have, the half Zatoichi, since that's the samurai's katana and that's just like the islander, except you deal 50 damage to yourself, if you switch to another weapon, after using the katana, and some of you people might forget about rocket jumpers, a parachute and the market grinding which deals crits, while in midair, I mostly use soldier, to destroy sentry turrets and more than groups of enemies in general and the soldier is one of the best classes that you can use for yourself. And finally what tier does he belong in? I'd say he would be like the A tier level, but closest to the S tier level. So the next and final offense class we are going to be discussing about is probably everyone's favorite, but hated mains for some reasons that I didn't really find any info about it, is the pyro. You all know basically who the pyro is, a silly guy who thinks fire is all about rainbow magic. Of course it is his point of view of everything around him, it's rainbows and cupcakes everywhere when you play as him. Now time for his stock arsenal, we will talk about his other weapons. After we discuss about the stock weapons, he welds his main icon weapon the flamethrower, it burns alive enemies and can air blast away foes and deflect projectiles such as rockets and grenade bombers from demo mans. The second slot bar weapons for the pyro are going to be his shotgun like how the previous soldier engineer and the heavy unit, it functions the same way, how average shotguns work and nothing special. The melee slot bar for the pyro is going to be the axe, where it deals the same damage as other classes melee weapons. Now time for everybody's favorite for the pyro's other weapons. The first I always use, and is my favorite and I main the most is the phlogistonator. It charges its own power meter when dealing damage to enemies. When it reaches full meter, you begin to go crits mode like crazy. I know there are also former weapons that I used to main before like the back banner. When it gives off crits attacks from burning opponents from their back, it's still good to use if you don't have the plog like I do. For the secondary weapon, I call the scorch shot. It knockbacks opponents when hit and gives mini crits damage on burning opponents. It can literally knock back heavies away while draining their health away with the power of mini crits and also charges your power meter on the flog at the same time without being near at the opponent. There are other flare guns that I also use. The other good flare gun I own is the original one as it can do full crits on burning opponents as I also recommend. The least flare gun type I own is the detonator, and it doesn't really seem like a good weapon to me. You can detonate, but it's hard when the explosion attempts to touch the moving enemy, only to give many crits to a burning opponent. I think it should have been buffed. The man melter is basically you extinguish and gain a crit per each extinguished teammate you quenched out while they were burning. I remember using this to help my burning friends from the enemy pyros from the opposing team, but it's not really useful when there is not that much pyros on the other side. 
for now his melee spot that I don't really use it that much, I mostly put on the third degree axe, where I've heard of can also attack both or more opponents when connected to the meaty beam at the same time. But the most quote unquote popular axe in my opinion is probably the axe extinguisher where you can mini crit on burning opponents, your damage will increase, based on the remaining duration of afterburn and a killing blow will gain you a speed boost after. How neat can this weapon be? Now what I use Pyro for, mostly when there are too many enemies grouped together in one spot, and overpower my team I always bring out my Pyro as a trump card, to try to turn the tights. So now what tier does the Pyro go in? I don't really understand why as he hated, but I'd put him somewhere in the 80 level. So now on to the defensive classes, we are now going to be discussing about the Demoman firstly, ah yes my favorite mercenary next to the soldier. The same all explosive weaponry like that of the soldier's own rocket launcher. He wields the grenade launcher which is like the rocket launcher, but does a bit more damage and fires quicker than it. I have the favorite two ones I own, are the iron bomber which I main for some reasons and the knockbacking power of the loose cannon, and when it hits twice with another projectile, it causes a darn plus mini crits damage bonus. To stun the enemy for less than a second I think, you can easily use the loose cannon to knock back heavies and even other opponents too. The second slot bar for the demo ranges from sticky bombs, like I prefer the Scottish resistance over the stock weapon, because it's a massive upgrade compared to that, and don't forget about the shields, I like having the splendid screen or the turning tide, but the splendid screen takes the cake thanks to it being better than the charging target which also functions the same thing as the splendid screen, but it is less resistant and finally, the weaker shield the turning tide does mini crits instead of normal crits, and you can still fully turn while charging, but you will lose momentum charging when you get hit. Finally the most favorite part about the Demoman is the melee parts, I own a collection of types of melee weapons for the Demoman including the Islander and the Skull Cutter which you can crit abuse with it, since the other weapons that he owns have no random crits on most of them, the main melee weapon I own for the Demoman is a head ticker, and I love my very own weapon I crafted it using the haunted scrap metal. A handful of refined metal and finally the skull cutter. So how I use the Demoman for, mostly I love playing him as a demo knight mostly, and a hybrid demo as well, but not really with the sticky bombs usage thingy, I get a load of massacres with the Demoman more than the Pyro where I used to formerly main before and that's how I play as him. Now what tier does he belong in? He's very great when it comes to combat and sometimes defense thanks to sticky bombs even though I don't really use it that much, but I would say he's the S tier guy thanks to him being my super favorite class. The next defense class that I don't really use that much is the heavy, yup the heavy weapons guy. His weapons own the mini gun where you can kill enemies at a closer range faster than the pyro due to how much damage this shit does. I'd prefer having the brass beast instead for this part, the shotgun area I'd like, having the panic attack and his foods inventory, the sandwich is the best where you can heal your health up to full HP. His melee part is where you meet his fists to the boxing gloves, where I recommend using, or the holiday punch, where you can be a putas hoovy and troll the fuck out of people by pretending to be friendly. So now what I use the heavy for. Mostly for the heavy, I use him for killing most classes at low ranges as he damages more quicker than the pyro, but he is less slower like a tank, since he has a lot of health or sometimes I be a putus guy, and be friendly, or troll some people in two fort, it just makes him look like a joke to me, since he's not really used by me that much, and only the medic is the only guy to ever boost him up by you but charging him. So now what tier does the heavy belong in? I would say he's quite good when spinning up that minigun to closer ranges of enemies, but when it comes to other cases medic is always there just to pocket him making him more stronger, I would still say he is like BT level. The next and final defense class is going to be everyone's favorite, the engineer gaming. Oh yes, I've heard a lot of people main the engineer, and especially about that big guy you've heard of. The engineer is a construction building guy who makes sentry turrets, dispensers, and teleporters. We will now talk about what are his buildings first before his main items, because that's mostly how a lot of people know about the engineer. 
First the sentry turret, where it's like tower defense, when you have this building installed. Level 1 sentry is basically like a spamming a semi-auto pistol fire rate thingy to enemies. Level 2 sentry is with dual small mini guns on both arms of it, and finally the maximum level. 3. It's level 2 plus the mini rocket barrage launchers, and look at how powerful these bad boys are, they literally are strong enough to overpower an entire team making them difficult to overcome, and win the match, the only way to easily bypass them is either you charge your spies or maybe use explosive weaponry from a very long distance range, because sentries can't always reach that far wide. The second building that the engineer builds is the dispenser, ah yes the building that acts like the locker closet offering you health and ammo to replenish your energy at any time you wanted to, it's very cheap and quicker to build this thing up and finally the teleporters, where you can travel quicker to different locations rather than running, finally for his own weapons the shotgun, but I'd prefer the rescue ranger, that weapon is very useful for repairing buildings from a long range instead of just using a wrench to fix them up, or the Pomsen 6000, since that can drain energy from medics midi gun and the spy's cloak. Finally the frontier justice grants you crits each building that you own. Got destroyed I mostly do this with the gunslinger, and speaking of wrenches, I'd like using the southern hospitality. Since you can make enemies bleed when hit especially I use this on spies or the eureka effect, where you can teleport using teleporters as your plotted locations when you press R on your keyboard to select what place you want to go to without going back and forth and finally I recommend the short circuit, where you can cancel out projectiles such as rockets and sticky bombs it's a very defensive tool to use. For the pistol slot bar, I like having the wrangler, where you can laser point at anything, where your sentry can shoot at or the gunslinger where you can deploy mini sentries and that's mostly my own battle engineer. Load out with my frontier justice, I wish they also added the other many versions of the buildings as well but sadly they got scrapped. Now what I mostly use the engineer for, as for most cases I prefer using him as a defensive class and teleportation on most battlefields. If I can set the nest up, you can build around teleporters to help your team teleport to another location where the enemies are located, and the sentries as OP as fuck where you can overpower a group of enemy mercenaries. So now what tier does the engineer belong in? I would put him around the S tier level, since he's goddamn as good as hell. The final group of classes on this category are the support classes. One that is going to be first in line is everyone's favorite the medic. Ah yes the healing god of TF2, he offers you anything you need, healing, uber, crits, resistance etc. Now time to talk about his weaponry. He dawns the syringe gun which I don't really admire using, but I would like to go with the crusader's crossbow, where you can deal teammates from a far distance and can still damage opponents as well. Now time for his most iconic items, the meaty guns. For me I prefer using the stock version, since that can grant you uber charge and invincibility as well. It's mostly used for overpowering sentry turrets or a horde of mercenaries opening massive fire on you. The others I would like to also use were the crit screeg and the vaccinator. The crit screeg offers you curts to go berserker mode on you, and the vaccinator offers you resistance to any attacks that comes on your way. Now finally the melee weapons and the king of all of them is the uber saw weir. When you hit somebody with it, it gives you a 25% charge on your uber meter per hit and a full 100% on a taunt kill, but sadly one half of that on disguised spies. So what we mostly use the medic for. Always pocketing each member on our team and mostly medics always go for the heavies. I've heard there are such things as battle medics, but mostly I see them on the Degroot map, but not regularly in gamma plays. So now what tier does the medic belong in? Even though I don't really play him that much, but I always think of him as being an ST level guy. The second on the line is going to be everyone's noticeable favorite the sniper, but hated by everyone, because it's used by botters everywhere on TF2, just like how your regular sniper rifles in gaming. You can land a headshot from a very long distance from the enemy and some of you guys can do trick shots. As for myself I'm not really good at playing the sniper, but let's see what weapons does the sniper have, we already know how the stock weapon functions, but I own a couple of better items for my sniper that I usually use, the first one being the machina where it basically does a 15% damage bonus when fully charged. 
up but sadly can't shot when zoomed in, even though I don't have this weapon, but the Sidna Sleeper is very useful for dousing enemies from a very far distance with the Jarrett effect instead of just typically throwing the jar at them, the effect can offer mini crits damage bonuses on doused enemies just like the regular Jarrett as we are going to be talking about later and finally the Hitman's Heat Maka when, after getting enough headshots or general kills you set a focus meter on. You will get a faster charge, and no unscoping on which I could remember using this weapon on man vs machine with a sniper. And don't forget about the bows and arrows, these weapons are much lighter than the snipers, what I've discussed before at least they can target opponents from a shorter range, and when doused on with fire, it becomes a fire weapon thanks to the support of pyros or nearby torches. I mostly use this weapon on the Degroot Keep map on TF2 just like the Demoman as a Demo Knight, what I've talked about before but sadly it's slower at deploying and reloading than the typical sniper. Now time for his secondary bar, he has a lots of stuff with it. First let's talk about the SMGs, I'd like to prefer the cleaner carbine over the stock weapon, because it grants you mini crits boost after dealing a handful of damage to opponents. The next online are one of my favorites that I've mentioned before is the Jarrett when doused it can affect mini crits when dealing damage to doused on enemies with the Jarrett and reveal hidden spies when they are cloaked and finally for the sniper's defense shield is the razor back where it can protect you from backstabbing spies while you are using your sniper because when you don't have this on it's easier for spies to exploit that weakness behind your back without the razor back equipped Finally for his melee weapons, it doesn't really seem to matter at me at all I only use the ultimate frying pan and that's it, but if you want to look for a better specific weapon then I would go for the triple man's shit where it can make enemies bleed when hit just like the southern hospitality that I've mentioned before, or the shahan shab where it gains you a 25% damage bonus when your health is below 50% of your base health. Now what I use the sniper for like what most people use him for. I would just generally say sniping opponents from far away at a safe distance, but I gotta watch out for other snipers though, or if I go with the bow and arrow then I would be on the front lines, but that would always mostly get me killed easily by other opposing classes. So now what tier does the sniper belong in? Maybe if you are great at doing trick shots or good at sniping maybe that could be A tier for you, but mostly not a lot of people are good enough for trick shotting and perfectly sniping fast moving opponents like myself, so I would say B tier. And finally we got the one and only that I actually maimed before, but for some reasons I don't know why people hate this class like the pyro, and it is the spy. You all know who the spy is, the sneaky guy who can disguise himself and enter into enemy bases without any of the teammates knowing what is really going on. Seems a bit sussy. Ha 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 funny ammo gust jokes. Suddenly he backstabs from the behind. So basically talking about his weaponry, the first thing I might see is his revolver. The two favorite weapons for that are the black diamond and the ambassador. I did use to formally main the black diamond before. Since it gains you crits per each backstab or each building successfully sap then unload them far to an opponent, while the ambassador deals crit damage to any headshot done to any opponent. So what revolver do I main now? I'd say the ambassador, since it's much easier to gain crits by headshotting to deal more damage, since you'll know headshots are the most effective way to kill off opponents and, rather than just finding a source like sapping buildings, nor performing a backstab just to gain a single crit. I have no idea why I got rid of my old ambassador a long time ago, when I first started TF2. For the melee spot where he uses knives, I love using the beginner, where you can repel your cloaking meter by 30% and gain a speed boost afterwards. And I've heard there is another good weapon I've heard, of which is the conniver's cune, where it overheals yourself based off how much health the enemy has, the maximum is 210 HP. The next part is his cloaking object, the only one that I always have on my left hand for that is the dead ringer, fake your death when you get hit and be invisible for a short period of enough time to go sneak inside the enemy's side and change yourself to Duskos as another person after that enemy kills you while you were in your former disguise suit. That is how I do it and that's my only one I use so far nothing else beats this bad boy. For the sappers, the red tape recorder might be too long to destroy a building 
since it reverse deconstructs a building like a sentry turret, so I prefer the stock one instead then shot or hit the sapped building to destroy it more faster. Now what I use the spy for. Mostly I use him to disguise myself to sneak inside enemy bases, but the problem is, people always spy check each, since since they are always aware of what is going on, and when you get too close to an enemy while you're disguised, the enemy immediately knows that you're an imposter of another teammate, and speaking of that, I disguise myself as another teammate from the opposing side, so that they won't be more suspicious than me since. I'm under disguised as being somebody else of their own team, and that kept happening to me every time as I play as spy. I always dominate teams as spies before, because they weren't smart enough to always spy check people around them. And especially sapping buildings are always the main goals of the spy, to easily destroy them as they easily push away your own team. That's why I sometimes used to main a spy before, but nowadays I'm not really as good as before, and I have no idea why. So now what tier does the spy belong in? Well I'd say somewhere between A or B, but mostly B, since you would die quicker than before. So guys, I think I might have ranked them based off how good these guys might be so far according to as how I play them. If I've missed anything so far let me know in the comment section down below. The most favorite class of all of them for me on my top 5 list are the scout, spy, pyro, soldier and the demoman. Anyways guys. Thanks for watching my video, make sure you smash the like button on it, subscribe with the notification bell turned on, join my discord server, follow me on twitch, and on twitter at ultra razor merc. See you guys on the next razor merc episode, ciao.